Hey guys, it's Mr. G, and in this video, I'm going to go over three things you can try whenever you get stuck in your program and it doesn't work the way you want it to. The process of testing your code, finding problems, trying to fix them is known as debugging. So it's essential that you create good habits and figure out good ways of trying to debug your programs. Hopefully, as you learn from your mistakes, you'll become a much better programmer and have less of them in the future. But make sure that you do not give up and you don't get so frustrated that you go crazy. Which leads me to tip number one. Tip number one, walk away from your computer. If you've been struggling through a problem for 15 or 30 minutes, get away from your computer. Go do something else, like play some Mario Kart 8, go take a 20 minute nap, go hang out with friends, go for a walk, or just watch a YouTube video of your favorite YouTuber. Of course, if you're in class, you can't really do that, so only follow this advice when you're coding outside of school. Your brain needs time to process what you've just tried and needs to think of new ways to accomplish a task. I can't tell you how many times I've walked away from my computer and gone to eat or take a shower only to think of a solution or something new to try and then find myself running back to the computer to fix my code. A short break often goes a long way. Tip number two. Become the computer. Trace your code, walking through it line by line. Snap makes it really easy to see how the computer is running through each line of your code. By clicking on this visible stepping button, you can use the slider to control how fast or slow the computer is reading through the code. Now that visible stepping is turned on, when I click on the green flag, you'll be able to see exactly where the computer is in the code. But let's say you didn't know about visible stepping or you're using a programming language that doesn't allow you to pause or see where the problem may be. You want to create some kind of visual signal so that you know if the right blocks are being activated. Personally, in JavaScript, I use console.log, but when I'm using Python or Swift, I use print to accomplish the same thing. In snap, I use the say block to see exactly where the computer is in the code. In this example, I've quickly written a script that should draw a square. Let's say I want to see and make sure that my program is turning 90 degrees after it draws the first line. So instead of saying hello, I might say just drew a line. I'm going to clear this. I'm going to turn off visible stepping and I'm just going to run my code. So you could see that it stops and says just drew a line for two seconds. So I know that my program is drawing the first line correctly. But let's say that I want to draw three squares in a row. So I decide that I'm going to throw my code inside of a repeat block. So I'm going to go over to control. I'm going to grab a repeat block and I want to repeat the process of drawing a square three times. So let me change the input to three and let me attach it right underneath pen down. So now the way I'm looking at it is I'm going to hit the green flag. The sprite is going to go to this position. The pen is going to come down. And I'm going to repeat this three times so that I draw three squares. Before I click on the green flag, I'm going to hit clear so that we erase the square that was there from the last time. And now when I hit green flag, I should have three squares drawn on the stage. The computer didn't do exactly what I wanted. It just drew one square. Now I'm having trouble understanding why the computer only drew one square when clearly I had the repeat do it three times. I'm going to pretend that I don't know about visible stepping and I'm going to go over to looks and drag in a say block. I want to see if snap is actually repeating this process three times. So I'm going to say drew block after it draws a block for two seconds. I'm going to clear the stage again and then I'm going to click on the green flag and it says drew block for two seconds, drew block for two seconds and then drew block for two seconds. So it looks like it is going through the repeat block and repeating this process. I think I figured it out. My sprite isn't moving in between each time that it draws a square. So what I could do is maybe lift up my pen and move a hundred steps before I start drawing again. So let me do that. Let me go over to pen. Let me lift up the pen right after it draws one block and then I'll have it move 100 steps before it starts drawing the next block. So I'm going to hit clear 
and I'm going to hit the green flag to see this in action. It says drew block, then it moved over, and now it's not drawing again. We have another problem. So what's happening here? It looks like my sprite moved over ready to draw the, the new square in the right place, but it's not doing it. If I go through the code line by line and become the computer, I can see that I never put my pen down after I lifted it up before I drew the square. So what I need to do is bring over a pen down within the repeat block. Now, before it draws the square, the pen will come down and it's gonna be lifted up after it draws the square, before it moves over to the new position. I can remove this pen down outside of the repeat block and hopefully now it'll draw it correctly. I'm gonna hit clear, hit the green flag. It says drew block, moves over, draws another block, moves over and draws another block, and then it moves over ready to draw more if I want it to. So you can see, that's how I debugged my program. And now that I see that it's working correctly, I can remove this say block. And we're done. Tip number three, partner up. If you're in a school, office, or co-working setting, it should be fairly easy to find someone willing to pair program with you. Getting another set of eyes and another brain working on the solution to the problem with you will expedite the debugging process. You may even learn something new from your partner or vice versa, and then they may even give you valuable feedback about your project. If you don't have access to another programmer in person, using the internet to search for your problem or asking for help can also work. You just need to be careful that you don't fall into the trap of using code that you don't understand. Using a resource such as Stack Overflow can help you find answers to a lot of your questions and learn a lot in the process. But you need to make sure you make an effort at learning why your code didn't work correctly and why the advice from strangers may be correct. If you follow these three tips that I just went through, you're going to be well on your way to becoming a much better programmer and learning from your mistakes and just being overall stronger at coding. If you have any tips for debugging that you'd like to share with the community, feel free to leave a comment below so all of us can see what other people do in order to debug more successfully or quicker. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.